When a 911 system was installed in Sargent County, North Dakota, in June of 1994, it came as a comfort to the residents of the remote rural area. But Bert Semenensky of Cayuga never imagined she would be the first person in the county to use the new system to reach out for help. It was quite a warm day. I had been doing dishes, and Ryan was playing outside. There were 11 years between him and his older brother, so needless to say, he's kind of an unplanned addition to the family. Ryan came in for a snack. The refrigerator. Really hungry? And so I took a piece of deli ham out, and I just rolled it up, and. He said he was going to go sit outside on the step and eat it. Careful, okay? He has it all the time, so I didn't think anything of it. Ryan's 13-year-old brother, Brad, was already outside. He keeps us busy. He goes upstairs. He's in our rooms. He's outside. Uh. Dispatcher David Kulikowski took the call from the centralized North Dakota State Radio Communications Center. I had never handled a choking incident before, and I was wishing right away that I had had more experience. Okay, uh, is he turning blue? Oh. Mom, is he turning blue? He's out. He's out. Okay, we've got to try the Heimlich maneuver. In a rural setting that takes time, for an ambulance to get there, I realized I was going to have to give pre-arrival medical instructions. But if you make a mistake, you could cost somebody their lives. The nearest medic unit was more than 15 miles away. exactly how many times we tried that Heimlich thing, but that didn't work. Yeah, he's turning blue. Oh, somebody's got to get here. Help, help me. God, he can't die. For he's just a little boy. When I heard the mother say the child was turning blue, I could feel for the mother. I have children myself, and I wanted more than anything in the world for that child to live. I, it was the only thing that meant anything to me. if he was even really still alive. But I told Ryan, you can't just die in the back of my mind. I knew that couldn't happen. He's blue. He's turning blue now. You still have him in your lap. I've got him in my lap. No. Okay, lay the child face up on the floor. Okay? Okay, straddle his legs with your legs. Okay. Gasping? 
Yep. I found out that Charlie was gasping for air. I realized there was hope. You've got to open his mouth and try to see if you can get something out. I'm trying. I advised the mother to turn the child's head to the side and scoop the material out of the mouth. I was hoping that we could get the material before the child could breathe it back in. Okay. I brought him outside. Okay. Was he eating something, Mom? Yeah, a piece of ham. A piece of ham? Yeah. Okay. He is breathing. He is breathing. Good. I think you just saved your son's life. Oh, my God. How's his color? His color is better. He's still wheezing. Okay. His eyes are wide open. Okay. And he's still trying to get rid of... Okay. It's coming. We can hear the siren. Please. Hang in there, ma'am. You're a brave woman. <sighs> Okay, as soon as they get there, you tell them that he's still got a partial blockage. Okay. And uh, make sure you tell them what he's got in store, the piece okay. of ham. Okay. Okay, I'm going to wait till they get there, okay? Okay. And thank you for your help. Okay, oh, he's throwing up. He's throwing up? Yeah. Okay, turn his head to the side and clean okay, out the mouth. Yes. Do it now. Oh, he's turning blue again. He's turning blue again? When I found out the child was turning blue again, it let me know that the child had breathed some of the material back into his throat. I felt a sense of dread. I'm the kind of person that's very hard on myself. And I felt that maybe there was something more I could have done. He was, he had color before, now he does it, right, Brad? He was eating a piece of ham. They're here. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Thanks for your help. Bye. He was eating a piece of ham. It took 23 minutes for the foreman ambulance crew, including EMT Joan Fawcett, to get to the farm. Because of the partial blockage, he wasn't getting enough oxygen. I've never seen a child as blue as this one was. I think we just better grab him and go, guys. I thought the child was in a lot of trouble, so we had to hurry up and get him out of here and get the, to someplace quick because he needed more help than we were able to give him. Ryan, wake up. His mouth is clamped shut tight. Come on, buddy. I would pinch him to see if there was any reaction, and there was no reaction. Ryan, I'm not getting a pulse. All of a sudden, I couldn't find a pulse at all. I thought we lost him completely, and I wasn't sure if I could go on myself, knowing that we did lose him. I've been on ambulance runs with CPR, but I've never done CPR, and I was hoping I was doing everything right. One, two, three, four, five. He started choking, so that's when we turned him to his side and a piece of ham fell out. Give me the section. It was pretty big. I couldn't believe how big it was. Well, hi, Ryan. He was looking around and he was responding to his name. It was the greatest feeling to know that he was getting better because this was our first 911 call. Ryan Semineski was hospitalized and released two days later. Recently, Ryan celebrated his third birthday. I've tried many times to imagine that whole thing happening without the 911 system and without anybody to tell me what to do and how to do it. I just can't imagine that this story would have the same ending it does today. The most special gift the family received that day was a visit from dispatcher David Kulikowski. It made me feel good when Bert came out and gave me a big hug because she was so happy that her son was alive. And I knew uh, she even liked me. <laughs> Words can't possibly explain how I feel. I just, I think he's the most wonderful person in the world. And I really feel that I owe Ryan's life to him. You're a special, special person.